Hello, everyone. Welcome to Cloud Native Live, where we dive into the code behind Cloud Native. My name is Taylor Dolezal, and I'm a senior developer advocate at HashiCorp, where I focus on all things infrastructure, application delivery, and developer experience. Every week, we bring a new set of presenters to showcase how to work with Cloud Native technologies. They will build things, they will break things, and they will answer your questions. Join us Wednesdays at 11 a.m. Eastern Time. In today's session, Diego and team have joined us to talk about from zero to production in less than one hour with Crateo Platform Ops. Uh, this is an official live stream of the CNCF and as such is subject to the CNCF Code of Conduct, which simplifies down to please uh, be excellent to one another. Uh, please don't add anything to the chat or questions that would be in violation of that Code of Conduct and be respectful of all your fellow participants and presenters. With that, I'd love to hand it off to Diego and team to kick off today's presentation. Diego? Thank you, Thank you so much for the invitation. I am Diego Braga, and I work uh, as a solution architect in Kiyotech. I'll be also an architect of a startup uh, that is called Digix, uh, but I will tell you later on what we have prepared for you today. And I will pass the microphone to Luca. OK, hi. I'm Luca and I'm working on Crateo. Uh, I'm a developer and today I play the role of a head of a platform team and uh, we will see later. I, and then the, I pass the part to Mauro. Okay, thank you, Luca. Uh, hi, Mauro. I uh, work uh, in uh, Crateo as a developer. I am a JavaScript enthusiast. And uh, I love to uh, hear, to, to, to have here. Yeah, and I'm Susan Daniels, and I work for Spotify. And more specifically, uh, I do developer relations for an open source project called Backstage, you might be familiar with. We are pretty much familiar with Backstage. Uh, so uh, let me break the ice. Uh, for today's live stream. So we started to develop Crateo Platform Ops uh, in the last year. It's uh, an open source uh, solution which uh, aims to give a centralized way to uh, go, um, create a provision and orchestrate and govern any kind of resource in any kind of infrastructure, adopting the cloud native approach. And uh, what we would like to do today is to uh, do some st storytelling, uh, some role playing. Uh, we will be the role of a startup that is called the Digix. And uh, let us uh, change the t-shirt and put the t-shirt of uh, the, the Digix team. Okay, so we can start. Okay, Luca Mauro, uh, I have a really, really great idea for our startup that is called the Digix. I know it sounds like the BGs, but <laughs> it's because I had a really, really great idea. So since uh, we do know that these are engaged in this time, and uh, we must make sure to protect them and find a way to protect them, uh, why don't we develop an application that gives advices on how to help them? What do you think? Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a good idea. Uh, besides, it's more important to take care of the poor bees, so yeah. Yes, yes, yeah. Yeah, we must to save the bees. So Okay, so, let, <laughs> so we need, we, so as an architect, uh, I think that uh, we need to find a way to uh, go into production in uh, really, really few, few minutes, uh, because uh, <laughs> the business is running, we have business requirements, so we have a lot of things to do. And for sure, I I do know that the dev team and the platform team will fight all the time. So let's find out if there is a solution out there to, to collaborate and to spin up the infrastructure, to deploy the application and do things uh, in the right way. What do yeah, you as the head of platform team, I've long been uh, targeting Crateo, which contains so many technology I love. And there is also a cool CLI, uh, so we can try to use it and uh, to install the platform. What do you think, Mauro? Uh, yes. Uh, um, okay. Now I go to Google and uh, 
Uh, Mauro is really enthusiastic. Mauro, I, I send you the link to the chat. Oh, okay. Thank you. As an architect, I would like to spend a couple of words what is a platform and what platform ops means. And usually I look at Google for definitions. <laughs> so I don't know if uh, Mauro can Google platform ops for me, but basically what a platform ops yeah. is, is a, an approach, is a methodology which uh, aims to organize the platform team in a way that uh, the platform team is a group of people and the scope of these people is to offer services that are consumable as uh, APIs uh, from the end users. And users can be, uh, anyone can be developers, can be business uh, analysts, can be uh, data scientists, uh, and some teams, uh, as Luca knows, as a head of the platform team, uh, uh, are struggling to find a standardized way to expose services and the uh, only unique way to do implement automation. Yeah. Okay. So I was reading this uh, on, on Google about platform ops, uh, and uh, I think that Mauro could uh, share the screen. Otherwise, I can do it. Yes, I already sharing my screen. I found. Okay, uh, so <laughs> My reposi the repository of Croteo on uh, GitHub. Okay, so uh, let's wait for, for the monitor to come back. Uh, yeah, because uh, ah, okay, it is uh, it is okay. Basically, um, I was reading something okay. about Croteo. Okay, here. Ah, okay, it is here. Yeah, I was reading uh, something about uh, this solution because uh, uh, actually I I was looking for as an architect to the cloud native computing foundation landscape uh, that is really really uh, rich of solutions and uh, the, it is rich but it could be so it could be also complex for a company uh, regardless of the, their size uh, to choose. Uh, how to cherry pick technologies based on the maturity of the CNCF, uh, based on the community, based on a lot of things. And there was a real look to different solutions that are in traction from the cloud native community. And uh, I saw that uh, um, Crateo is uh, a platform that uh, cherry picks the uh, open source projects from the CNCF. Uh, and, uh, standardize the way how you offer these services on a catalog. So as an architect, I do believe that uh, I should, as a, the platform team should uh, uh, abstract the complexity of uh, infrastructure provisioning, uh, uh, machine learning model sharing, et cetera, and give all, only um, input forms to the exactly as Google, Azure, Amazon, uh, all the public cloud providers do with their uh, consoles. So, this solution uh, of Crypto Platform Ops, uh, I think it should, uh, it should give it a try. Also because uh, it's based on uh, a lot of interesting uh, projects like Backstage. And uh, I was following Backstage uh, in the last year, and Backstage is a really interesting developer portal that Spotify Engineering uh, released to the community. And uh, they made a lot of interesting features in the last month, uh, but I don't want to steal uh, the, the topics to Susan. So uh, I think that uh, Crateo did the right choice to integrate the stage uh, in, uh, for, the, for the port. But also uh, there is another interesting project that uh, Crateo is leveraging uh, that is cross play that we really love it. And, uh, it's the same way. I mean, the, the approach is exactly the same as backstage. If you if you think about it, so you have manifest that describes something. Everything is based on data, so everything is audited. So uh, everything is based on Kubernetes. Uh, we are talking about Kubernetes APIs. There is no, no locking, no proper language, etc. So I think these projects are really, really interesting. And the fact that we use them. Uh, and collaborates with them is uh, uh, told, told me that uh, something that our startup should use. So 
uh, I think that uh, Luke was right, uh, and we should install Crateo in order to spin up our application. These uh, are struggling and are in danger, so we have less than one hour to, to save them. Yeah, I read also as well the GitHub Kubernetes cluster for Crateo. So I don't know, Luca, do you have uh, a yeah, 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 yeah. uh, schema? Mauro, do you remember the EKS clusters that I gave you the reference later? Uh, maybe, no, I don't know. Uh, let's <laughs> you try to connect to it. Uh, wait. Yeah, uh, you, okay. you could try to install Crateo there. Yeah. Okay, let's try to install. Let's check. Uh, okay. So give me the con the cube config file on the chat. Okay, I'll send you on the oh, chat. Oh, okay. Here Thank you go. You. Okay. Oh, so easy. Okay. Uh, Barista Cartel. Okay. Just a second. I installing it on my terminal and just a second. Okay. No. Okay. Uh, I. Uh, you can view my screen. Okay, this is okay. It's installed. Okay, uh, yeah. So, uh, what I need to do? Uh, okay, yeah, just a couple of commands. Oh, easy. Okay. That's I, I did, uh, okay. If I can say something, uh, I will complain to the guy that wrote that uh, installed not me because uh, as an architect, I would like to see more documentation. So I will open. That uh, section should be expressed better. Do you agree with me, guys? Because uh, yeah, yeah, up to two instructions. Yes, yes, but uh, absolutely it's, uh, easy, easy install, and I, I think it's fast. Okay, thirty second. Okay. And uh, so the second command is, uh, okay, Crotero Mr. Core, two commands, okay. Yeah, this is super easy. Looks like super easy. We we'll see okay. if it works. Crotero Mr. Core. It, it's fast and uh, it's easy. Oh, okay. Okay, here we go. It is tall. Let's check the cluster. Okay. My alias uh, are <laughs> very, <laughs> super, very, super very, alias. yes. Okay, get any spaces and uh, okay, I jump in Pateo system. Okay, and okay. Odd. Just, okay. Okay, I think uh, it's. Uh, Installing uh, the other component. Okay. Look. Oh, Crateo dashboard backend front end. Okay, create uh, creating container. Creating. Okay. Yes, running. Okay, creating, creating container. Okay, let's show. Okay, running. Okay, uh, not uh, yet ready. But uh, I think uh, it's everything up. Yes. Yeah. I think uh, he's uh, building uh, many things uh, on the background. But uh, we can uh, wait uh, some meals.
Guys, are you back? Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Kind of. So you are already going to production. It's done. Everything is live. Uh, not yet. Just uh, wait uh, some second. Okay. okay. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm worried, uh, worried that we are late for going to production. Uh, these are uh, struggling. Uh, and I'm finding a way. We're still creating the back end. Okay, so as far as I write down the documentation, um, in, the, in the core module that we installed, I think, there is backstage within it. So, yeah, absolutely. Uh, yes. The, the core part is leveraging backstage as a portal for exposing services. So, I think that. Uh, uh, they get the right way to install Crafteo. I never tried it, but uh, that should work in, in this way. So the, the, I what I love about the Crafteo platform ops is uh, the, the last uh, graph that you are showing. So um, as an architect, I love uh, loosely coupled technologies. I love abstraction, and I love uh, uh, using manifest to describe uh, anything. So. Carteo uh, leverages uh, Kubernetes APIs because uh, Xstage does this, uh, in this way, Crossing does it in this way. Uh, it doesn't mean that uh, um, Kubernetes is uh, uh, the only environment in which resources can be provisioned. So, uh, Cloud Native is really cool, uh, and a lot of companies are transitioning to uh, this approach. But uh, um, we don't need to forget the, the rest of the environment. Maybe it's on premise, maybe it's on legacy environments, etc. So uh, I, the fact that uh, Kubernetes as a control plane can handle a lot of different views outside Kubernetes, it's uh, uh, a really cool idea, in my opinion. I don't know what you think, guys. Yes, um, sorry, Diego, I'm uh, uh, just uh, putting this uh, DNS FQDN in our uh, Cloudflare DNS uh, just for to have a better address. And I back here. And, uh, and uh, Luca, what do you think about uh, this slide? It's it's a, it's easy. It's, it's cool. What do you think? Yeah, it's clear. It's super clear. Uh, I like the way all the pieces are connected together. Um, yeah, it's cool. Okay, and uh, what we can do with the uh, Crateo? Uh, Okay, uh, just uh, go to docs. Uh, the install. Uh, maybe there is uh, a, some information about install because uh, uh, the DNS is not uh, yet uh, propagated. And uh, I think uh, it's about uh, five minutes and it uh, will work. Okay. Uh, is okay. Just a second. Sure. The power running and the service are 
Oh, okay, okay. Okay, let's try to go to the dashboard. And so dashboard can work up more see you, this one. Oh, okay. Cool, it's running. It's propagated, okay, it's working. Fantastic. Okay, uh, just about uh, five seconds, but these <laughs> can wait uh, five seconds, five uh, minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, and uh, now we don't have uh, some components, uh, and uh, okay, we need to create uh, our uh, BGX app. Yes. Uh, yeah. How can we do that? Uh, I think. Uh, I found uh, an example. Okay. Okay, maybe uh, it's time to speak uh, about uh, Cloteo. Uh, sorry, uh, backstage of uh, Spotify. Yeah, so thank you. Um, so let's us wait until my screen is, uh, is shared. Okay, thank you. So I joined this, uh, this cool tech uh, company called uh, The Big Geeks. And um, I was thinking it was about uh, about music, um, you know, coming from Spotify, where I work with Backstage, I thought, well, you know, music and Backstage, well, that sounds like a good idea. But it turns out it was a whole different story. Um, it was actually about bees. Uh, but anyway, long story short, I joined the company um, and I had my onboarding. And during my onboarding, um, they talked about the tools they used. And one of the tools, it was Backstage. Now, most of my onboarding took place uh, uh, in backstage. And let me just sign in a little bit here. Um, in one of the documents, they had this uh, onboarding document with all kinds of information I could find on the tools they used, um, where I could find what kind of documentations, like literally anything I, as an engineer, uh, would need to be successful. But yeah, then you have this onboarding um, you get your laptop, you, you, you get this document, um, but actually you do not get to see something uh, uh, in the kitchen. You know, during your interview process, people will not show um, what tools they're built upon. Um, and well, as an engineer, you're really curious. So the first thing I do is going to uh, backstage here and see what kind of services we have uh, and discover more about that. So. Yeah. For this, I use this uh, software catalog. And in this software catalog, I see all these things, but basically I really would like to know um, things uh, I own, my team owns, because a person basically normally would not own anything. Uh, it would be a team owning a service. Um, so let me see, well, these are the things I own, but I could add other like things to filter on, like the marketing department or maybe some life cycle or text which are used um, in the service definitions. Um, well, the actions workshop, that sounds kind of interesting. So I'm just gonna click that one. And when I do that, I immediately see all kinds of relevant information. Like I can see what it is. I can uh, uh, immediately go to the source and find where it is on GitHub. Um, but I also can read documentation um, and learn more about the service. So that is a, that is a rather good start. Um, other thing I could also look at is maybe looking at how the actions are actually going. Um, not that well, so it's good that they hired me uh, maybe to uh, get away uh, those nasty errors um in the whole process um so let's see what's going on there well there's obviously some error here uh let me just go to the log files and i can discover this all without leaving uh this portal so as you can see this is an aggregation of several services um, which uh, we are are using um, for me that's super uh handy because i get all this information 
um, just in one place. Yeah. Now, if I would like to solve this problem, um, I would have to click the link and you know look what's going on and solve it in the tool itself. Um, but this is like my my bird's eye view of uh, of what uh, what is happening. Um, I can also discover uh, what APIs are provided, but also um, are consumed. Uh, well, naturally, I'm really curious, so I read the documentation and I wanted to know um, how this actually works. So I can, you know, dig up definition and maybe get more information and really learn how um, I would uh, have to use this API um, digging through the source code of the application, um, building up my confidence about, uh, about the organization. Now, um, I could also do it on a different level, like from the API going down, um, I can see the relationships between the different services. So if I would go to uh, the Spotify API here, I can see that it is used in uh, three uh, uh, three, three different consumers. Um, and if I click that, I can get to that one as well. Now, Backstage is not a developer portal. It is a platform for building developer portals. And by that, I mean that in itself, Backstage is basically a collection of plugins, um, which may, means that it will um, it, it has no opinion. It will really fit in your organization because you have the freedom to uh, add, modify, remove any plugins you might need and configure them in the ways you like uh, see fit. So for instance, um, I gave an example for, for GitHub. Um, it could pretty well be that um, for the marketing mini side, mini side, we would also click on CI CD, but it would be hosted on GitLab. Um, and this is basically what you can get with, with those plugins. Um, it makes it really extensible. And that is one of the reasons that um, Backstage was developed this way. So there are different plugins, uh, examples, uh, Argo CD, which uh, most of the viewers might know as well, um, Circle CI, Jira, PagerDuty, Snick, um, there's many, many plugins, and you can develop them uh, yourself as, uh, as well. So when we developed uh, Backstage at uh, Spotify, um, that was one of the big, big things which make it, made it really successful because um, the engineers who own services or a certain domain, they were able um, to create their own plugins and by that, enabling themselves and others uh, to, to venture outside of their domain. Um, so they could like discover the services or create them. Um, that is a little bit of, um, bit of background. Um, but yeah, basically every tab I click, every thing you see here is all, um, is all based off of, um, of plugins. So here you can see, for instance, the page of duty, well, I don't know how, just my first day, and I'm already on call for the marketing side. I don't know if this is a good company to join, but anyway, um, this is, uh, this is what, uh, what happens. So this whole catalog, it is built um, off of files, which is all YAML. Um, you can populate it in uh, uh, different ways. Um, it is not meant as a sort of truth, it is a place where you like aggregate all your different sources of truth uh, and offer that uh, experience where I, as a new engineer, can can easily like discover this uh, this information. Another part is uh, documentation. So um, yeah, like you can see, um, you can also create uh, documentation here and aggregate the, it uh, also from already existing sources. Um, for instance, um, you would probably uh, include the documentation with your source code. Uh, that's perfectly fine. But if you uh, have other uh, places where you have documentation, you can all um, aggregate them into this, uh, this uh, single, uh, single place. So if I, for instance, would, uh, would search on uh, GitHub 
now uh, actions. I don't want too many results. Uh, workshop. It will search both my catalog and all known sources uh, for uh, for um, for results. And then I can like filter between documentation or things in the catalog it could find. Um, and there I can uh, can resume my journey on the information I, I was looking for. Um, the other thing is um, creating. And for this, we use uh, software templates. And with the software template, I can basically um, create a surface with uh, on base of a skeleton, which would um, include all best practices uh, the company has. So if I build up my confidence, reading the documentation, learning about the APIs, about you know the, the, the way the applications actually work, um, I could start my, my first project um, here and be also confident that it would align to certain standards and best practices as well. Once again, these, these templates, um, you can like just edit them. Um, it's all obviously YAML uh, and you can create it with uh, actions which are already available. Uh, for instance, uh, Bitbucket and GitHub and GitLab, uh, but you can extend that, uh, that as well. So let me just uh, create something. Um, if I if I fill out this uh, this form, um, let me just do that. Paste it. I don't want to bore you with my typos. Um, I can basically fill out all the information I need to uh, uh, to to do this. Let me select the correct team. Um, it will create a repository. Uh, with uh, the skeleton files. Um, it will register it in the catalog and it will also create the uh, documentation. So if it is uh, finished and I would open it here in the catalog, you can see that already, already uh, my project is there. So hopefully here are some things already in there to get me uh, started. Uh, and also the documentation link is already there uh, already there as well as you can see so that is that is a good starting point for me um, and it will massively uh, improve my experience uh, as a as a developer so it being so extensible um, and uh, by using plugins, it is a perfect candidate, perhaps for the big geeks to um, to control their uh, uh, um, um, software with. Um, we see many more different projects uh, uh, adopting um, backstage as well, creating a plugin or like building a whole experience uh, with this uh, with this uh, beautiful project as a, as a source. So thank you. Back to Diego. Awesome. Uh, Diego, are you still with us? I think we lost Diego. <laughs> no. All right. Uh, while waiting okay. for Diego, um, oh, oh, go ahead. I just no, um, talk, speaking about uh, templates, okay, the, uh, backstage templates, Mauro, I found a template to release our application. Okay, do you have the link? Okay. Let's try to apply this template. Okay. I'm going. Can you share, share get the screen? The... Yes. Okay, perfect. Okay. I'm getting the link from the chat. Yeah. Okay. 
que é this is ok thank you thank you dear. well uh, I ok let's try to create uh, our uh, bjx uh, app uh, we put the URL of uh, the template and uh, let's analyze it and uh, import ok it's fine well we have the bjx app template yeah so, great what's this name for our app uh, save uh, b yeah it's good name. you like uh, yeah i love it description uh, our our some uh, app i'd say plus. that's name that that name a is a b plus yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, and next step, uh, okay, we integrate uh, our app uh, with the uh, Captain uh, delivery platform. Uh, so we have uh, a super secure uh, Captain API token. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and the owner is... Show uh, to everyone. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I think it's not a good idea to share our uh, Captain API token. So, uh, save B is the repository. Okay, uh, looks uh, fine. Okay, let's uh, okay, create. Let's try to create. Okay. No, not found something. Uh, let's retry. Save B two. Maybe the second attempt is better than, than the first the years uh, i mm -hmm. show you again uh, the captain api token so you can copy it uh, repository say b2 okay. okay now it's publishing correctly yeah maybe uh, get something uh, uh, some some problems on the API. Okay, it's uh, okay. Uh, authenticating uh, on our captain, creating project, creating service. So let's go in uh, my GitHub uh, page. We have a uh, save B two. Oh, save B one. Okay, uh, looks fine. Okay, in our captain we have a uh, save B two. And uh, we have uh, three stages with dev, dev test and prod. So uh, in test, we can do some tests. And uh, it's delivering. OK, so I back on my uh, terminal. And uh, I get the namespaces with my super alias. And uh, I jump in uh, CVB to dev. Okay, so give pods, uh, not yet running, but uh, I want the service because I want this external IP and I go here. Okay, not uh, still working, but the container is not uh, ready. Okay, stay here and uh, wait uh, to deliver the app in uh, all uh, the stages. Okay. It's uh, super easy. It's uh, just with the one click, uh, we uh, are delivering uh, our uh, save the app. Mm -hmm. Okay, just uh, some seconds. Okay, in testing. Okay, let's try our URL. Not yet. Okay, but uh, while it's creating our app, I go back in our Crateo platform ops and go in save B2. Okay, and then I know there is this card. This is the overview of our app in Captain, uh, only in dev stage now, for now. But I know there is 
this overview. Okay, dev is succeed and test is still running. Let's try to. Whoa, oh, okay. our awesome app. Yeah. Yes, it's so cool. We are the VGX. <laughs> <laughs> Like, yay, congrats. This is yeah, awesome to see you. Okay. But, uh, Luca, uh, I want to show something more. I think uh, we can do something better. Okay, let's uh, wait uh, all the delivery in dev, test, and production because in Captain we have, uh, oh, sorry, uh, three uh, environment in. Uh, they have uh, all is delivered, the test is delivering, and the prod uh, not yet, but uh, I think uh, it will be so fast. But okay. Okay, let's wait uh, some seconds. Okay. Test uh, is okay. So if uh, I back uh, in uh, my Crateo platform ops, uh, we can see the three stages of uh, our app. Okay, we have uh, chosen to use uh, uh, Captain to deliver our app because it's uh, really uh, fast and uh, easy. Normally, uh, all the operation that uh, I done with our template is uh, uh, made from the Captain uh, uh, CLI, but uh, we have uh, uh, integrated our Crateo platform also with the Captain a API. And so with uh, just uh, uh, one click or one, two click, uh, we can deliver our application. And uh, so this is uh, the second thing that I want to show you. We have uh, the first uh, uh, image the BGX100, uh, zero, zero, and uh, I show you uh, how we can deliver the version two of our application. So I go back in uh, Crateo and okay, new delivery. I change my version. This is uh, the stage is a dev, and this is the uh, image with the tag. So delivery. Okay, I go back in uh, Captain and just, okay. This is the delivery of our BGX to uh, second version of our application. Okay, I think uh, all the app, the, the app, the first version is uh, in dev, test and production. Uh, I just uh, back to the uh, CLI, uh, get namespaces. Okay, we have uh, three namespaces, one for dev, one for prod, one for test. And in every namespace, there is a pod with our awesome application. So I go back in Captain and we wait the delivery of dev. We have the 01 version, but uh, I think uh, it's really fast to switch. Okay. So the, the Captain tab uh, shows uh, the second context because in Captain, every delivery is a context. And uh, we have uh, the test prod and you can show the details of every steps. Some information in the test and product of the second uh, delivery is, uh, is given from the previous uh, context. But oh, dev, uh, so I think it's delivery. I go back here. OK. OK, this is the second version of our application. So we have the home page with a hive, but uh, if you go in Australia, we have this uh, amazing B, but uh, we need, in Italy we have this, in Japan this, and the uh, USA this. Okay. Great. So, 
just uh, with the one click uh, we have delivered uh, our application uh, for uh, for now um, sorry luca i, I have only one uh, two uh, images uh, i'm uh, developing the app uh, uh, at the at the night uh, and uh, not yet ready for the the version uh, three, but I think it's uh, a good uh, a good start. Yeah, it's a, a great start. Besides, we did all in real time and uh, less in a uh, time less than one hour, so it was great. I think yes, yes. In forty minutes, we have delivered two uh, version of the app. And uh, with the uh, captain, with the uh, Croteo, with the uh, backstage, uh, we we have uh, all the tools that uh, works uh, very very cool. Really fantastic! I'm sure the uh, the stakeholders or bee handlers will be very happy about uh, getting all of this out so quickly. <laughs> so congratulations! Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I do have a few questions for all of you. Um, if there are any, if anyone out in uh, uh, watching the stream has any questions, please feel free to throw those into chat, and we'll be sure to kind of uh, get those questions answered. Um, one thing that I did see come up was uh, in relation to backstage and uh, seeing that there was an Argo plugin. Um, is there a plugin for Flux? Was one question that I saw, or just uh, do do y'all know of any plugins that are going to be added that y'all are excited about? Yeah, so if you want to um, know what plugins we uh, currently have, uh, you can go to backstage.io. There's the big, big plugins button. Um, and you can discover all the, the plugins we, uh, we have. I'm not aware of, uh, of Flux, but um, um, it just might be. Um, you could also find it out by uh, joining our uh, Discord uh, channel and just shouting out if anybody is already working maybe on that or uh, has interested in interest in that, and you know maybe even uh, pick it up uh, yourself. It is a CNCF project, so um, uh, feel uh, feel free to contribute. Well, feel free. You're really really invited to contribute uh, <laughs> and uh, and add the functionality you. Uh, uh, you are missing um, to uh, to backstage. Awesome, awesome! Thank you so much. It's uh, it's, it's always fun to see what uh, plugins people are looking for, and then uh, uh, you know, like was said, if you want to get involved with adding some, uh, now now might be the time to take a look at uh, how to how to contribute and how to help out on that front, or at least raise that issue up so that other people can think on that and, and kind of work with you on that front. Um, another question: yeah, Sometimes I have, it's just adding an issue, and people will will reply to that and pick it up or you never know. I, th I think that's the biggest thing with open source is there's kind of always that worry. It's just like, ah, I, I really want this thing, but ah, I have to do so much work to, to get it to that point. But like you said, you know, if uh, sometimes it's as easy as raising an issue and then people are like, ah, good idea. And then uh, can kind of help make that happen. Awesome. Uh, one other question that I have for you was, uh, how does one add a new service to the catalog pertaining to back, uh, backstage? Yeah, that that really depends. There's a there's a few way, ways. So the um, like I uh, I've shown in the in a really really short demo is, for instance, by creating a new component with uh, software templates that will add that to the uh, to the catalog. Um, but basically, uh, it all like many things in life nowadays. It all comes down to a little bit of YAML. Um, which you which you would uh, which you would add. Um, this is something you could do uh, manually, adding that uh, to your uh, to your repo, and uh, then uh, importing it. So if I would go here to the create, I would register an existing component. Uh, I could just like point directly uh, to the to the YAML. Uh, it would be uh, analyzed, uh, and I can choose to import it. Uh, another thing is I could. Uh, basically, also just point it to a repo, um, and from there, um, uh, it will offer to create it uh, automatically as well. Ah, fantastic. So there's many, many different ways, and you could like maybe have a um, have a, a custom processor which will read some source, or 
maybe even a script which will generate all this. Um, that's not up to me. It's up to you. That's awesome. It's nice to be able to kind of have a framework to work within. And I know that uh, in a few of the companies that I've worked with, that, that something like this would be highly beneficial. There, there's just so much time spent chasing down, you know, who owns what and how do I work with this this tool or this API? Um, not API, but the API. Um, on that front, uh, what's the best way to go about finding an owner of a service? Say if like something were down or I'm trying to take a look at an integration, um, how would I, how, what would be the best way to use Backstage to look up that person? Yeah, I would just uh, go to the, to the surface. Um, for instance, uh, if it would be something uh, which would be down, for instance, this marketing mini site, I would go there, I would see the description, I would see who's the owner, I would see who's, uh, who's on pager duty. Uh, I could create an incident like that. That functionality is in there as well, um, uh, provided by, uh, by the plugin. Um, if I would like, uh, for instance, I could click the team and I could see who's on the team and, and that sort of things, which other services do they own? So there's different ways to identify that. I could have also like typed the service name in the, in the search bar and end up at one of these uh pages and go from uh, from there it it really helps because the, the infrastructure is becoming more complex there's more and more and more engineers being onboarded the the, the prediction of the number of, of software <laughs> developers working at companies is so high that i really wonder how we are going to even provide uh, uh laptops enough for them let alone uh make sure that that they are uh easily onboarded uh, into uh, uh, increasingly difficult uh, um, uh, companies. And another thing which is also uh, uh, quite complex is the infrastructure itself. Like, uh, well, let's just not mention the CNCF landscape map. Um, <laughs> that, that alone says it all. But if you imagine that uh, you would work with only a selection of uh, uh, cloud native technologies uh, with um, within autonomous teams, then um, you can imagine that those autonomous teams might have their uh, own implementation even, or their, their, their own um, a way um, uh, of, of, of setting the standards uh, for, for, for their um, uh, piece of platform. So um, yeah, this, this really uh, makes it, it, it will not solve it, but at least you, you will be able to find it. Um, and that's also why uh, why this was started uh, within Spotify uh, a few years back. It's uh, music to my ears to hear that. So that's uh, that's really fantastic. It, it's it's nice to be able to have that single place to look everything up because it is so difficult to you know r rely on everyone to get their documentation together. It's it's difficult to do, especially for you know things that aren't greenfield, uh, things that are being either onboarded or just older system services. Maybe even some uh, applications that require minimal maintenance, but the team really doesn't have time for. So it's nice to have a platform to kind of roll all those things up to you so so thank you all at, at spotify for creating this. this is really fantastic yeah and i wouldn't say that it is easy but at no. least you can <laughs> never never easy maybe straightforward but uh possible is is exactly. something that i'm happy to take <laughs> uh awesome uh, one other question that I saw come in was uh, if my machine doesn't have enough resources to spin up an entire Kubernetes cluster, um, are, are there some alternatives for me to be able to take and, and actually start using some of these tools or, or inspecting some of them? I think that uh, if, if no one has an answer, one, one thing that I've found helpful is the uh, KIND project, the Kubernetes in Docker. Um, I know that uh, Docker, for, Docker Desktop and Rancher Desktop, there are a few platforms out there that enable you to kind of help out on that front um, uh, and, and to kind of get up and running as quickly as possible. I like Kubernetes and Docker um, in some of the... Uh, some of the contexts that I work in because I can test things or pull down the latest version of Kubernetes as soon as it's been, you know, close to as soon as it's been released and uh, and actually see what features are, are applicable and, and usable. Um, yes, just a clarification. We uh, will deliver, a, uh, sorry, release a SEAS uh, version is a cloud uh, version of uh, all the Clateo platforms. So if uh, you don't have a 
power computer you will uh, can use our cloud version that's really nice i've i've seen um one of the projects, I know we didn't talk about it today, but was uh, telepresence. And, and there's some interesting uh, projects within this space in order to kind of uh, upgrade your computer or give it more capabilities. So definitely, definitely recommend checking out that cloud offering if, if you all are curious about that. Um, awesome. Uh, I have two more questions, but uh, if any of you out there uh, in, in, in the interwebs have any questions, please feel free to throw those into chat and we'll get those asked and answered. Uh, my next question was uh, uh, taking a look at the integration environment. Everything had looked fine there. Um, what, how, how, could, could you kind of talk through how that promotion process works within the infrastructure configuration to you know, bring things to production or, or kind of one environment on that front? Uh, what, what, what steps are involved? Sorry, I, I lost uh, the connection for just uh, a second that I can repeat the, the question, sorry. Yeah, no worries, no worries. <laughs> um, so, so the integration environment that we started off with looked, you know, looked fine and, and was, it was mostly straightforward to kind of understand. Um, when it comes to promoting to different environments, can you kind of tell me what's involved with those steps with, uh, with these platform operations? Okay. Okay, uh, so in, in uh, the uh, web UI, we have uh, this uh, button and uh, this button calls the Captain API. Uh, so for this demo, it's uh, uh, very, very, very easy and very, very small. We uh, just uh, can deliver the dev stage uh, this in image. But uh, to Captain API, we can uh, Post uh, a lot of settings, a lot of uh, configuration, and uh, I think uh, the mm, the next version of uh, our plugin will be more uh, powerful. Awesome. Uh, do you know if there's any way to ensure that a deployment in production guarantees some predefined SLIs or SLOs? I I'm assuming that would be with Captain. Um, but uh, do you know how to go about satisfying those SLOs or, or setting them? The captain, okay. Just, okay. It's uh, based uh, on the, the SLEES law, um, SLEI and SLAO. Um, files uh, and uh, we have uh, uh, i will show you the uh, plugin we have a shipyard uh, yaml in uh, captain and uh, here we can define all the stages in uh, our um, for the our um, application we have uh, the stages the name the dev test uh, production and uh, the the sequence we with this uh, button we have uh, triggered the deployment delivery uh, the sequence delivery sorry in uh, the delivery sequence uh, it uh, deploy the application in all uh, uh, in all of the our uh, stages so uh, when i click here sorry i click here the starting stage is dev but captain delivery all the, the, the application in all the other stages. So for example, yeah, okay, we can uh, uh, post a delivery direct. So for example, if uh, Luca wants to uh, publish the application only in uh, test, for example, it, uh, he can post a trigger in uh, the uh, delivery direct and uh, manage uh, the version of the app in all the environment. And uh, Captain has uh, some other cool uh, function. For example, um, we have uh, a demo with the uh, remediation. Remediation is uh, that uh, the application will uh, pass to the uh, next uh, environment if only uh, meet uh, some requirements. For example, if uh, an application 
the second application is uh, too slow to uh, go in uh, the production, Captain can uh, uh, monitor it and can stop the delivery on uh, for the all the other uh, stages. Excellent, excellent. Definitely something to to take a look at because that's nice to have those you know quality gates as we kind of go up to each of the different environments. But yes. uh, wonderful, wonderful. Well, yes, thank you so much, uh, everyone. Okay, uh, yeah, uh, one, one more thing. Uh, in uh, Captain, sure. there is uh, I'm sorry, there are a lot of tutorials and uh, very very uh, explained, very very um, complete tutorial, and uh, you can uh, try the. Captain platform for uh, the easiest uh, environment, uh, so in, uh, in to the complex, uh, more complex. So I I think uh, it's a it's a good uh, product. Absolutely, yeah. and, absolutely. And one more thing to to add to that before we for, forget to mention that, but uh, the Corteo team um, will release the backstage plugin, which you've seen in the demo uh, for for Captain. So. Um, that is also something to maybe people are interested in uh, as well. I think it's it's brilliant. So uh, you yes. might think it's wrong. Th thank you, <laughs> thank you. Yes, uh, this is the our first uh, version of the Captain plugin, but uh, uh, we are uh, developing the um, first uh, release so um, to make uh, it uh, so so stable. And uh, we have the Captain overview and. Uh, is uh, you can see in the overview we have the card but uh, we have uh, uh, also the card in the system and uh, not now for this uh, uh, demo but we have a summary overview of uh, all our environment so for example uh, just for clarification in the system you can uh, view these uh, details of uh, your application. That's really fascinating. I, I, I really appreciate y'all coming out today. Unfortunately, we are at time, but it's really nice to see kind of how all of these systems can integrate t together and kind of connect. You know, they are greater than the sum of all of their parts. So I think that that's, uh, uh, thank you so much for coming by to show us that as well. Um, all of these things are, are I've, I've seen Captain a little bit, but uh, I'm kind of curious to check out um, all of the all of the other things that you showed today. Uh, you know, I've spent more time on stage than backstage, so definitely need to, <laughs> to check that out. <laughs> uh, thank you everyone for joining the latest episode of Cloud Native Live. It was wonderful to hear from the whole team today. Uh, we really love the interaction that we had from the audience. And uh, join us next week where we're going to be talking about what's new with Caverno. Uh, Caverno is a policy engine designed for Kubernetes. Uh, thank you again for joining us today. We hope to see you soon and have a wonderful week. Adios, everybody. Have a good one. Thank you.